because, you know, the Republican Party, the two basic principles of the Republican Party are let people keep more of their money, less taxation, and let people make more of their own decisions, less regulation. On a personal basis, it goes to all these medical mask mandates and all the stuff we've had recently. Welcome to Red Move Nevada. We're going to interview the candidates. And this is a system where we're going out and talking to some key candidates and, and some of the more contested and interesting uh, primaries. Today we have Gary Smith. He is running for Assembly District 40. Gary, welcome to Red Move. Thank you. So I'm going to start right away and just ask you some basic questions about yourself. So to, I'm going to ask some sort of out of order. You wouldn't expect these as a candidate, but you're from out of state and you moved to Reno. When did you move to Reno and why did you move? Uh, 1972. So you've been here a while. Yeah. yeah. And I moved because uh, then uh, Governor Reagan suggested to me that I might move indirectly. <laughs> That's his... he, he was uh, he had, was governor of uh, California. I was residing in California. Uh, I was there since I was uh, uh, seven, in seventh grade. And in addressing the uh, California state legislature, he said, if we don't do something about straightening out this mess of overtaxation and overregulation. People are going to start voting with their feet. And I took him at heart and I voted with my feet. And I got out of California real early. I think that was good timing. Yeah. What was your business? What did you do? What, what did you do in the seventies and eighties? What, what, what's your business background? Well, started out with the paper route and uh, in uh, grade school, and I all. My last three years of high school, I worked 30 hours a week in a pizza parlor as a busboy and assistant pizza chef. I worked at Lockheed Missile and Space Company for five years out of high school while I went to college. I got graduated from San Jose State University with a degree in economics. Where was Lockheed at that time? Which facility you were? Uh, Sunnyville. Sunnyville, okay. Yeah, Lockheed you. Missile and Space Company. Yeah. Um, and I worked in computers there. Um, the last time I worked for a salary, but somebody else paid me, um, was in 1966. And at that time I, I left the Melonix division of Litton Industries where I was a computer software design engineer. And, uh, I went into the concert production business, the nightclub business. I've farmed and I've ranched. I have the oldest pistachio orchard in Merced County, California. I still own it. I planted it in 1968. I've been in a variety of retail businesses and motel business, uh, a lot of entertainment business. I've done a little record production, managed a couple of rock and roll bands. Um, I have have a small RV park uh, out of state, and been in the mini storage business, still am, and in retail and wholesale stationary supplies. So I know probably the most interesting thing, I remember I interviewed you two or three years ago on Timelines, and you worked with some top groups, and I remember in Orange County, you worked with the Mamas and the Papas or something like that, if I remember right? Yeah, well, Mama Cass, uh, but I produced the first outdoor rock concert ever draw 100,000 people, it was the Newport oh. Pop Festival. Is that in Orange Pop, County? It was at the, at the Orange County Fairgrounds, yep. uh, August 3rd and 4th, 1968, um, and we had... A, a variety of top acts at the time. Sonny and Cher, Tiny Tim was number one in the nation <laughs> with Tiptoe Through the Tulips, The Jefferson Airplane, uh, The Grateful Dead, Eric Burden and the Animals, Chambers Brothers, Country Joe and the Fish, uh, Iron Butterfly, Paul Butterfield Blues Band, Canned Heat, uh, to name a few. Wow. Uh, so how long were you in that business in production? Uh, well, I'm for 40 years. Oh. Uh, yeah. I've, uh, I was a long time owner of the Reindeer Lodge on Mount Rose Highway. And, uh, we had our last concert up there about 15, 18 years ago. Um, and I had a, a lot of acts up there over the years. I owned that from 72 till present, but it's now closed and I've, the uh, roof collapsed on a building and I've removed 90% of the building and the property's up for sale. I also had a, a nightclub in uh, Sunnyvale, California from uh, 1969 to 1989. Um, a few claims to fame there. Eddie Money 
worked there uh, in 1973, I believe it was. Uh, every Sunday night for a year, he did four sets. I paid him $135 <laughs> you know, a night, but uh, did a lot of work with the Doobie Brothers, uh, John Ray Hooker, Sons of Champlin, Lydia Penns and Cold Blood, The Tubes, Leon Russell, Edgar Winter, Van Morrison, to name a few. Be going for a while. <laughs> wow, oh, that's very successful. I know you've done well, and that's probably the most interesting thing about your background is your uh, relationship in the entertainment and production. What was the one thing, this is the last question, we're going to go into politics, but what was the toughest thing about running a production? Uh, that's hard to say. It, it's uh, Running a production company is a lot like campaigning for office. Uh, you never get everything done, so you have to prioritize things. And there's always a list of more that you could have done or you would like to do. Uh, uh, and I'm talking about concert events because you have to set up for the concert. There's a, just a lot of details, administrative type thing. There's contracting, a lot of money going in and out, uh, a lot of relationships built. And you work up to a date, and then all of a sudden, the gates open, it switches mode. Now you're just managing a, an event for four to six hours, depending on whatever. And that's like election day. <laughs> and then <laughs> when that's over, you sit down for a few days and regroup. Uh, so for a major event, how long does it take to put it together? What's the cycle? Uh, it depends. Uh, no longer than three months because really? you're 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 still dated if if you try and plan something six eight ten months out you're the market's going to leave you and wow. you know it just uh, uh, you, you 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 can't anticipate things that that far in advance you know it's different in the nightclub business that if you have like a concert night or something you do it every week I mean you you're you're planning the date well in advance, but the actual what's going to happen that date is maybe 30 days in advance. We find that with Red Move. We do, uh, we plan out all our debates well ahead of time, and they stay pretty much on schedule, but the details really come down to the last few months. Yeah. Interesting. Very That's good. Same. I could talk in hours on the production business because we're in that business ourselves, but not the level you were at. So going on to your campaign, um, why are you running for assembly? Well, the um, let me just throw something out. I'm financing my own campaign because I can afford to. Not everybody can, uh, and but uh, I can. The country's been good to me. The state's been good to me, and I just think we need honest, forthright, straight-talking representatives, not politicians. Representatives, and I think the country's in trouble. The state's in trouble. Uh, and uh, the people are not well represented, and I have the time, the tenacity, experience, the education, and, and the, the drive to go and try and do whatever I can about it. So what, uh, what are your top priorities when you get there? Uh, well, my top priority is to uh, beat my uh, primary opponent. Uh, I'm running against the the last so-called Republican in the state legislature that voted for the largest tax increase in the history of Nevada, the commerce tax, after campaigning for a year and promising not to. Uh, and even to the point that he was at the Carson City Central Committee the night before the vote on, on that tax, again reassuring them that he was a no vote. And he met with the governor the next morning, and that afternoon he voted for it. So for those listening in who may not be familiar with what happened, what year was that? That was, that was, that was 2015. 2015. So when I came, I retired from the military, came to Nevada to raise my kids. Marino High School, wonderful experience. But the Repu there was a Republican Assembly, Senate, and the governor. Everyone was Republican. Thought it was really cool. Thought we'd have a great state. And then all of a sudden, it took Republicans five Republicans and the governor, to vote in the largest tax increase the state's ever had. And that torqued off so many Republicans, they didn't vote next cycle. Yeah. And now, 
we have all Democrats in Assembly, Senate, and in, as the governor. It was it, it, ha- it took five Republicans and the Republican governor to lose the whole state. Well, it was more than five. Um, I thought there were five. It, five, five principal in northern Nevada. Uh, there were some in, in southern Nevada. Really, also. I thought but, there were but, like five but assembly was, and Senate. But they because uh, they, they had to go but, over to the but Democrats. It, but side. It, the Democrats were all on board. Hundred percent Democrats <laughs> with, with, with a tax increase. I, think it, I thought it was only and five. it required a two thirds vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, it it took a substantial number. And, I believe it was actually a total of, of 17. I didn't realize it was that so, many. I, I yeah. was early on. It was very disappointing. Yeah. And what I, I, I'm talking Assembly and Senate. Assembly and Senate. Yeah. Okay. It's very yeah. disappointing. And I know that the a year or so later, the people that just voted down are very similar tax. Uh, a year or so prior. Yeah, well, later, 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 I mean earlier, earlier. Yeah, earlier, earlier, yeah. Uh, there was a people's initiative on that tax, and it was voted down by approximately 80%, 84 to 1. Um, right. And then the, the legislature took it up. Um, and again, it was a so-called Republican governor that proposed it that was, that was sandable. Now, tell us and, a- and as a result of that vote by those Republicans, every one of them, uh, with a, one exception, was voted out of office the next year. Including my opponent, right? He was voted out in 2016 specifically for that vote. He was uh, censured by the Washoe County Central Committee and the Carson City Central Committee, which both those counties, a portion of Washoe and all of Carson, comprised that assembly district at the time, uh, Assembly District 40. And the Carson City Central Com- Committee, where he was a member, he was removed from the party for. Uh, and he ran for re-election uh, in 16, and he only got 25% of the vote. So it, some of those people that voted for that, that uh, you know, tax increase didn't run for re-election because they right. read the writing on the wall and they weren't going to make it. PK could have read, you know, my opponent could have read the writing on the wall, but he didn't. He only got 25% of the vote. But he did run and was voted out. Uh, Al Kramer was elected. Al Kramer served for two terms, and then on the last day of filing in 2020, uh, Assemblyman Kramer announced that he, well, he didn't announce, but he made the decision, allegedly, at the, on the last day, not to run for re-election. And there was communication between him and my opponent, and my opponent went in there and filed at the last minute and was re-elected for another term. So. He's already been voted out of the legislature because, you know, the Republican Party, the two basic principles of the Republican Party are let people keep more of their money, less taxation, and let people make and in business, less regulation. And when somebody campaigns for a year as a Republican, a registered Republican, against a tax, which is basically the largest tax increase in the history of Nevada, and then turns on the last day and votes for it, uh, we can forgive him for that, but he should no longer serve in office ever again in the Republican Party. Uh, well, I know a lot of Republicans didn't vote for Republicans that cycle. They went independent or they just didn't vote. And yeah. that's why we lost it. It's really important we come out and vote this next cycle. But uh, so other than that, where do you want to go? How's the campaign going? It's going well. Uh, there was a. Uh, the district has changed it a little bit. Uh, Explain the district, yeah. Tell yeah. us where the area is. I, I was in Senate 16 uh, for many years, decades really, uh, and I ran twice for Senate 16, which is comprised of Assembly 40, which I'm running for now, and uh, Assembly 26. Each Senate district, there's 21 of them in the state of Nevada, is comprised of two Assembly districts, being there, there's 42 Assembly districts. But uh, I actually moved out of the district about three years ago, and I moved to a vacation home, if you would, or a part-time home we had in Virginia City, which is Story County. Uh, But in the redistricting uh, this year, I didn't find out until January. The redistricting wasn't done until December of last year, of of 21. They expanded as as a result of the population shift higher population 
a stronger growth in southern Nevada than in northern Nevada, so the population has to be adjusted. The districts have to be adjusted, so they're generally the same amount of you know people in people each district, in right. each each senate district and each assembly yeah. district. So in the redistricting, uh, Senate sixteen and Assembly forty, both were expanded to include all of Story County. So. I had moved out of the district, and then they moved the district back in underneath me. And I could have run, run for Senate 16 again, but I, I chose not to for a, a variety of reasons. Uh, but um, well, I think you're trying to take out PK, or you're trying to take out your opponent. Who's yeah, yeah, the one yeah. Guy and I, interesting. I was with other people before I knew I was in the district again uh, in the fall of 21. I was working with people in Carson City trying to get a viable candidate to, to run against uh, O'Neill. Uh, and there were some possibilities, and but as it turned out, by the end of the year, it had all dissipated because it's, it's, it's hard to run against an incumbent. Uh, you need a strong candidate to do it. Uh, you need somebody that's, that's a a proven campaigner and you know you can't bring a, a a greenhorn in to do that and then uh over over the the holidays i determined that uh when they announced the districts that lo and behold i'm in the district <laughs> they moved the district to include story county so um i was asked and uh uh to consider running and I, I, I stepped up the plate and I'm uh, Very good. I'm campaigning so, hard and I'm, I intend to you know, do the job. So we're running out of time, we've got a couple minutes left. I'm going to ask you one more question about this election. Now last election cycle was insane. We had unsecured, unsolicited, unsolicited ballots. That means they mailed out to everybody whether you wanted a ballot or not. People were collecting them. There was issues that people from out of state voted, 4,000 different places. What do you think of the last election? In the voting process, and what can you do to fix it? Well, it, it, it was what do we have this it, year. It was a disaster, uh, and uh, one of the things that I think we may be able to get through is voter IDs. Uh, I think we can get some bilateral uh, support on that, but uh, we're going to need to take control of the governorship and the Senate and the Assembly, probably to reverse that stuff. But it needs to be reversed. Some of it might be able to be reversed in court, uh, like the lack of, of signer, signature matching. You know, it, some of it gets into constitutional issues, and uh, I support any and all efforts to set aside, you know, those onerous, you know, uh, you know, uh, attacks and assaults on on our our election integrity. Election integrity is, you know, there's a lot of issues about the integrity of the election. And that could actually cause, in the general election, a Republicans are you to lose. Yeah, yeah, it could. And it's, so it's going to be a tough election issue. cycle. It's an issue. But the other, the, the other big issue to me is, in addition to the substance, is the process. You know, the system in the state legislature is broke. You know. We, they don't comply with the open meeting law. They exempted themselves dec decades ago. My opponent, along with most other, almost all other legislators in 2015, also voted to exempt themselves, the legislature, from the public records law. You no longer can get any of their communications, their communications to their lobbyists and their special interests that finance their campaigns, or you can't even get their personal schedules. You can't get in any of their text messages because they exempted themselves from the public records law. You can get all that stuff from the governor and you can get all that stuff from the clerk down at the DMV that waits on you <laughs> down there. But you can't get it from your elected representatives in the legislature. And that, that needs to go away and that can be done. So as that the FOIA is federal. Yeah. Freedom of information FOIA is Act. federal. So and the state's and, and authority the state is NRS 239. It's a public record. The law. NRS is right. And yeah. They can control those more here and yeah. shut things down. Yeah. That, that's true. The uh, Brown Act, I think, was, I forgot what it was, but open meeting laws. Yeah. Those are in place, right? Yeah. Very yeah. good. So is there anything you want to say in closing to the voter out there well, in your district? you know, I've been, uh, I've been fighting abusive, intrusive, arrogant, oppressive government for decades on my own dime and time. 
And there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the legislature on process. And I think I have the public with me. They're just not knowledgeable. And they, they haven't had a leader, someone to raise the issues within the body. Uh, and it, it tends to become a good old boys and girls club. And I'm not joining. <laughs> I'll, I will represent the people and I have uh, no allegiance or no, uh, won't, my strings will not be pulled by special interests because I'm not accepting any donations from them. I'm financially secure and uh, I'm not into this for fame or fortune. I'm in it to give the people a real voice and not just a voice, but to give them eyes and ears on the other side in the back rooms. And I will report faithfully to the people. Again, in my, you know, career in life, through life, I'm pretty familiar with publicity, newspapers. I was in the promotion business and uh, I, I can, uh, I can uh, publicize or get publicized issues. And I'm not, I'm not, um, excuse me, I'm not camera show. Okay. So in finishing, <clears throat> I, I just want to thank Gary for showing up today and we're here and we're, by the way, we're down by the river in the, uh, the Swanson facility, the Swanson Lane facility, which is wonderful. Thank you, Chris. And uh, we'll get this interview up and uh, we'll see you at one of the Red Move event here shortly. And then bottom line, it's what I see for you, Gary. I said, uh, you, you, you're going to, the, to get elected first of all and then and promote more freedom by reducing regulation, like we talked about, and uh, more freedom and liberty. And those your choice, Lord. Solid Republican. Yeah, you know, people say that uh, that you can't fight City Hall, and it's it's kind of true. But uh, I can change some of that or a lot of that. You have to encourage people. Other people say, well, the people are not interested; they don't want to participate, etc. Well, they don't want to participate or they fail to participate because they don't think their participation matters or is effective. But if you change some of the rules uh, in regards to public record law, open meeting law, and the process at the legislature, and encourage and invite those people back in to the process, it will be, uh, you know, a uh, uh, better well-rounded and people can regain their confidence in the government. Well, thanks, Gary. Thank you. Good job. And two claps to... I'm used to, in the old days, we used to do this to the sink. Use the sink. Now we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, our computers.